So this is similar to uh, what I've shared with you guys on a quarterly basis in terms of how we're doing in terms of expenditures and obligations for our ARP money. Um, with the obligation deadline coming up at the end of this year, we really need to make sure that everything is obligated or we're going to lose it. Um, I just finished yesterday the second quarter reporting to the feds and we show um, based on what I've reported that there's about $16 million that isn't obligated yet. This is different from the balance that you see on the first slide that we have of 25.9 million. Um, and that's because we have about 9 million that is obligated through the reporting. Um, so on the second and third slide, those are our uh, community development initiatives and our technical assistance and um, expenditures, just to show where those projects that are out in the community um, are at in terms of being expended. And they're both, you know, with over two years left, they're both more than three quarters of the way. So we expect that those ones will be fine in terms of expenditures by the 2026 deadline. Um, but we really wanted to just talk about revenue replacement today. And so on the fourth slide, um, we'll see what we've already done with revenue replacement, um, which Lisa can talk a little bit more about that one. Okay. Um, on the uh, right-hand side of the page, top, uh, the top uh, section is the calculation, calculated revenue loss for 2020 through 2023. Those are the four years that we were allowed to calculate revenue replacement. So you see it, it increases every year. Which page are you going? Uh, I number them. The next page. So the yeah. So over the four years, we were able to calculate 48879684 that we are allowed to take revenue replacement. It goes up every year because um, built into the formula that we're allowed to use for this is a 5% revenue increase that should be expected for any city. And since we, we haven't increased taxes in any of these years, we actually enough we have not increased that five percent so uh the amount that we're allowed to take uh increases each year so uh right now we've got 48 million uh we've used in the next section now the amount used is uh we've used 21 million of that we've got uh in the first year a real trucks and pumper trucks for the fire department, uh, incinerator repair, Baldwin Park uh, spent nearly 4000 on that, um, and the DCED and uh, DECD and the race loans were about $12.8 million. Um, the planning salaries that have come out of there uh, for the uh, GIS and uh, data analysts 34748 and the total is 21.584. That leaves us 27,294,000 Now, uh, the amount unextended on the other side, we've got uh, the, the initial grant of 76 million, uh, the expended amount of about 50 million leaving us with balance of 25 thing. So basically we could take everything that we have left and run it through revenue replacement if we wanted to. And not and lose it with the deadlines. Not lose it, it it's no longer. And um, we'll, we'll go into a little bit more depth uh, talking about that, but uh, that that's the, the principle <laughs> generally. Um, the next slide, these are the remaining projects 
that still have balances in them that we would be recommending to run through revenue replacement and their amounts. Um, these are all, you know, projects that we've already, they've all been voted on, they're all set to go, but because they haven't all, they're not all under contract, we can't obligate them yet. And so the, the fear would be not having them obligated by the end of this year and then that money needing to go back to the government. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a few of them that are starred on here, which these are projects that for the most part are obligated out and we expect to be fully expended by, I believe, the end of this year. Um, so if we didn't want to run absolutely everything through revenue replacement, these ones could stay where they're at. Are they the ones that are on our list as a bulletin? They're the ones that have stars after them. Um, so under okay, Public Works curb cuts, the watershed, the lift station, and landing station. Um, in planning, it's digital infrastructure in the website. And for community and economic development, um, the community development initiatives and the technical assistance grants. Yeah. And if you're wondering why the total on this page is a smaller number than our balance. It's because we have about 1.7 million sitting in revenue. It's already gone through revenue replacement, just hasn't been expended out. Um, so then on the next slide is really what our proposal is to do, which is to run all of our remaining unobligated funds through revenue replacement and by doing that, set up a mirror image budget in a new fund that has our same allocation budgets. And Lisa can talk more about that one. Now, the mechanics of this, um, there's several different documents that will have to go through council. Uh, resolution to transfer these funds from their various different buckets in the uh, our ARP fund into the revenue replacement account. So that would be accounts transfer. Uh, resolution to reimburse the general fund out of that revenue replacement account, and then that would be like, you know, a 20 to $24 million reimbursement. The ordinance to set up revenue and expense budgets in the general fund to be able to actually transfer that money back out in the general fund and into a grant account or a grant fund. As um, Victoria said, we would set up a mirror image in a just in a different fund. So we would still have the ARP fund. It would just not be under the regulations for the federal um, fund site anymore. Right? Just be it. The city of Erie without, ARP fund. Without that binds anymore. Correct. We would be able to stretch the parks to yes. make sure that we get matching grants on this, we'll be able to stretch yes. some of the staffing to make sure that it isn't abruptly ending. Yeah, yeah. we'll get more out of everything if we can do it per se. Uh, and then we would need to um, a, wire tra a resolution to wire transfer the funds from the general fund to a new fund and an ordinance to set budgets in the new fund. It's similar to when we did those loans a few years back and, and um, we had a really long explanation, letter of explanation along with what we were doing and several documents go through council all at once. That's probably the way we would do it. Who's working with parks and public spaces right now? British. Yeah. We're in the process of selecting the consultants. As early as that we come to the office this month, we should be able to get everybody off. There's going to be a lot of the hour and shooting books. Because for me, I, I'm a little, I have a question on the community development initiative. Like, what exactly was that, and why didn't we spend? It in a timely manner, like why are we able to have still over half, 500, 591,000, what is that supposed to be? So, 
earmarked for. So if you actually go back to this slide, this is, um, those are all of those projects. Those are our community development initiatives. It's the third slide. Oh, it's the money that was pulled back because these the specific organizations weren't able to follow the regulations. No, it's just the money that's left. Um, they, they were originally all, I believe it's 20, 20 something. They were awarded 2.3 million and they've expended up till now 1.7 and have about 566,000 left. They're all doing really well. Um, and that's something where they submit a payment request okay. for and check it at a check is issued. Mm -hmm. So um, if they meet their commitment, that would be exhausted by the end of the uh, um, funding term. These were awarded through an application process. Yes. Then there are committee that reviewed the applications and we got awarded these funds. And some of them will finish with their funds mm -hmm. and some of them are just getting started. Yeah, we've kept a pretty close eye on them. We get progress reports from them every quarter. Um, you know, any budget changes that we need to go through, we go through with them. The only one um, that really doesn't look good on this list is that uh, Godensia Crossroads is at zero, but they're putting on a new group and they are doing that right now. So we expect by the end of next quarter, they will be at 100% if not close to it. Um, when we work with the, going back to the parks and the consultants, um, what does the consultant really do? Do they, if we're getting community outreach, what does the, do they provide like a, hey, this is what I think you should guys should do with this park, or how does, how does that? Okay. So the next week, um, just kind of outline the benefits and risks and what our suggestions are going to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you know, under the ARP ruling, sending this money through revenue replacement is an allowable thing to do. Um, you know, it would hold up for any financial audit. We've been on multiple webinars in the last few months where they basically say, this, you should do this. If there's any question, you should do it this way. It's the way to get your money past those deadlines. Um, essentially an easy button, they call it. Our consultant agreed. Um, and like we said, the benefit is it releases these funds from the deadlines and regulations. At the same time, we've also talked that that's a potential risk of it being released from the deadlines and regulations right. because you know, there was there was a purpose to this money and we don't want, you know, you've all voted on this already. We wouldn't want any future. Just Kathy did. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we're coming into what okay. we decided upon us. So yeah. yeah, that's why we're asking the hard questions because my concern comes down to without the federal government having these regulations and guidelines, how are we gonna make sure that the people who are going along with the plans are actually doing what we had intended for the monies. That's my concern. Right, and I think what we wanted to do, it's our last one, is keeping beneficiary agreements and deadlines in place. So at least for the people who've already received their agreements, 
nothing's changing for them. You know, they're already in contracts with the city to do this and to have the money spent by a specific time. And we really want to hold them to that. If something comes up and we need to do like a six month extension for a specific reason, we can amend the agreements. But that was one of our main suggestions was really keeping all of that in place. But it just alleviates those deadlines from us on the city and the reporting and the administration side. And keeping the current allocation buckets in place would ensure that we would continue with the spirit of the ARP grant, um, spending it on things that are allowable, or only allowable under the grant. Um, I, I think that's the right thing to do because this money was received for a particular purpose. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, to help those communities most impacted by COVID. Yeah. Right. I mean, say it for those things. Yes, exactly. Nice question. Uh, well, I mean, we're not at the question part. We normally don't do questions. I mean, do questions to them? Yeah, at the end, we'll, we'll do it. Oh, nothing to that. No, 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 nothing, nothing's preventative. It's just normally to say that. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks, Lexi. Um, so then I went and I tried to find just some examples. It's our last slide of other cities and municipalities that are kind of doing the same thing. Um, just as like a little bit of reassurance, um, I found, I was able to find two examples today. Kalamazoo County in Michigan reported 100% of their, uh, they were awarded 51.5 million. They put 100% of that through revenue replacement for projects covering quote, a myriad of internal county department projects as well as community partner projects. And Greensboro, North Carolina did the same thing. They were awarded just under 60 million. Um, they did it through two different sets of revenue replacement. But I think what's important about these, and I've included links if you want to visit them, is they're still tracking where all of this money is going. They've got great dashboards up on their website that says, yeah, we sent it all through revenue replacement, but these are the projects that it went to, and here's how all of them are going, which is essentially what we do as well right now with all of our projects is we've got tracking sheets knowing where all the money has gone, what needs to be spent, who our contractors are. Um, so it's just, it was helpful to see these two places that received, they received less than us, but it's still, you know, similar to our amount, um, just to see that they've done it and it's working well for them. And it's just a reason that we should do it. Well, I know Council Member Nelson has mentioned many times over the last few years that, you know, revenue replacement would just take all the regulation and all the red tape away and make everybody a little less stressed about what projects we can focus on and use this money for as long as, you know, it's within the guidelines. Um, so I know he's happy. He looks like he's yeah. happy. No, I mean, this is, this was a, the biggest change that happened in the final rule, which right. happened as soon as we got into office, right, right after all of the money had already been decided, allocated. Yeah. All the money was allocated before the final rule came out. And the biggest change in the final rule was this. I mean, I, I think it would have, I, I mean, I've been harping about, yeah, the entire time we've been in, well, a week less than the entire time we've been in office. <laughs> Uh, and I mean, I think it, I think it could have, would have, and should have changed the whole thing, but mm -hmm. I appreciate the way we've been able to adapt to it, especially right. the community economic development, the revolving loans that came out of that, mm -hmm. I think are a much more dynamic way to, to keep Make the impact going. Mm -hmm. Like there's, there's a lot to really like about, uh, finally making this decision. Right. Yeah. Um, my, my concern is just the making sure that we stick to what these funds were intended to. And mm -hmm. I forgot on being here a while so I'm going to help make sure that happens and I don't know about my fellow colleagues on council who feel the same but I want to make sure that the ARP funds are actually impactful to our community whether that be the public spaces that we have or the revolving loans that we offer or many projects that we can help contribute to so I'm happy to see that there's a way to make the staff mm -hmm. in the city halls a little less stressed but at least be able to focus on these projects that we hope to see come to fruit one day and i think it's important to note that like we're not in a bad place at all um you know everything that i'm hearing through webinars and different emails that i get from um the government is that you know most municipalities they've only 
obligated or expended a third of their funds. We're already expended over two thirds of our funds and we've got what more than half of the length of the program left. So I'm not we're not in a bad place is what I want to say. It's like we're doing really well with it, but there is there are questions on certain projects and getting those obligated that I think this helps us stay on track with. I just wanted to add that some of our beneficiaries uh, through the community development initiatives, some of them are undergoing capital uh, construction and that takes time uh, if in order if it's a depending on the dollar amount, they're required to get do RFPs, request for proposals. Mm -hmm. And uh, our intention is to make sure that that work is completed. But if we had to have everything obligated by 1231 of 24, that could be in jeopardy if those aren't in place. Well, the only thing is, because I found out recently is that actually the beneficiaries and subrecipients aren't held to the obligation deadline. They're still held to the expenditure deadline. But once we've entered into an agreement with a subrecipient or a beneficiary, that is acting as it being obligated from us. They're not responsible for having their funds obligated in that, by that deadline. But they are responsible for having it expended by that deadline. And we would like to hold them to that expenditure deadline. Be clear. I've, um, so when you said that we've already spent two thirds of the money, um, how much of that is stuff, I'm just, I'm just uh, making sure that I, making sure that that's the most accurate information uh, for my own or for any of the public. Uh, Cause I know a lot of that money went through revenue replacement into race, mm -hmm. into economic development, into loan funds. Mm -hmm. Has that money already been deployed out um, for or when you said two thirds, are we just talking about like for ARP guidelines purposes? For the most part, yeah, just for ARP. Um, it's out of our account. Mm -hmm. Okay. In, into races and DCVs. Um, I, I, I mean, I see that Chris is here. Yeah. Do you, how, how much of that have you been able to deploy? I mean, is there? So it's not going to replace. I, yeah. yeah. And so you get that through the project list. I'm looking at like expanded fiber for velocity net, um, five iron project, child development centers, mm -hmm. uh, expanding availability to daycare, some of the smaller uh, financing projects like urban honey bakery. We, we've done a lot of, well, you see them all because they come yeah, through here. Yeah. They, they come through here. So um, 12th and Green Garden, um, the, the new owner of, of that and the future project there. So, you know, there's been a lot of good projects we that we wouldn't have been able to fund some during my right. and, and, and without that. So and there's a lot more on the radar. Right? We're working with Eastside Renaissance. You'll see that on your, or I think that already went through. Uh, none of those, we wouldn't have had enough in the funds to do all of those. So there's probably been, mm -hmm. 25 or 30 examples of projects that by by creating these revolvers we were able to do wouldn't have been able to do with our traditional enterprise zone so that money's been out for a long time so, so i was overly impressed with her two-thirds thing and i found it to be unbelievable so so just to just to just help me adjust that into the real numbers of it what what percent have you deployed of the money that went through revenue replacement out into revolving loans on a ballpark. It, it, it's probably about two thirds. Wow. Awesome. Yeah, I'm, gonna awesome. Be, I'm, I'm getting ready to do my quarterly loan report. You'll see that in a couple days. Yeah. Okay. And I want to say combined mm -hmm. right now, I've got maybe four and a half million available, but there's other projects that are on the horizon coming up. So yeah. um, two thirds is about what I've got out there right now, but they're all working in good projects. And yeah. All do, it's, it's doing what it's supposed to do. Um, and, and you've heard me say this before, the beauty of it is it's coming back to us. Yeah. We can keep reusing it and we earn a little bit of interest. It's not the main driver, but you know, we don't have to grant all the time to make things right. work. Right. No. Yeah. Grants are great, but sometimes making sure that we have something for later ways. is important. Right. So, I mean, we're going to be able to look back years from now and say we went from, you know, four or five million in loan capacity to 25 million and it's yeah. out there and it's working. So. Do we have any idea where race is on their deployment? I 
We, this last quarter, we expended to them over the, two million. Over two million. million. Uh, I believe, um, yeah, they don't have uh, that much left. Um, so, I mean, they, we put money, sorry, through revenue replacement. Oh, oh sorry. sorry. I don't think we have it. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, okay. I, no yeah. that we don't. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to knock you down from two thirds at about 60%, but that sounds like it's way ahead of the class. It's uh, way ahead of the rest anyways, of the country. <laughs> congrats to, to the administration and to how you guys have been able to execute that. Yeah, I don't have any questions. Does anyone on council have any questions? All righty, Dave, what was your question really quickly? Thanks. So my question is, if I'm hearing this right, the projects on pages, projects for them to be replaced, aren't going away. We're just putting money in a different pocket for funds. And the expectation is that we're going to spend that money exactly the same mm -hmm. way as on this yes. stage. Yeah. We just wanted to get the regulations and the timeline off the books so that we can hold on to the monies after the 2025 deadline. If I'm not mistaken, 2026. 26. Yeah, so that was actually, because we discussed this in caucus, I feel like everybody on council is pretty well familiar with it. And um, But for the public that's watching that wouldn't have been able to hear him uh, with, uh, ask the question. Uh, what this basically changes is that it takes us away from having to do reporting and accountability to the federal government and otherwise nothing is changing as to how things were allocated. That's that's what we're agreeing on here. Yes. Uh, and, and we're just making things easier. Right. Yes. So those monies will still be heading towards those projects. It's just without the timeline looming in. It is. If we have any money left over, can we get a bathroom? <laughs> we just found out that we don't have any money. <laughs> I know, but maybe. <laughs> we're doing too good of a job spending it. I know. <laughs> I don't think they're that expensive. So because we're saying this publicly, the federal government knows that this is going on. Basically. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Yeah. Okay. And it's within their government. Okay. Uh, that was actually a federal uh, webinar that used the term easy button. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he said, why wouldn't you do it that way? Yeah. And while we, like you can see from the, the revenue, the first revenue replacement slide um, that shows our projects that we were initially available to put 48.8 million through. So we couldn't do like the two examples, throw all of it through. <clears throat> um, but we are close. How will this be reported to us in our five-year projections and such? So right now, one of the, I think one of the most confusing things in our projections, uh, you know, it's what, like page 95 of our, of our budget, right? Um, we do the five-year projections and we have the reimbursements and then we have like the expenses and the reimbursements is, is um, you know, that's one of the things I asked you to, to change in, I think a year or two ago was that we, that we would end the reimbursements. So is this going to now reflect in the five-year budget, you know, coming up as we start seeing this in November and December? Is this going to start reflecting in there as, a, as an operating transfer then, rather than a reimbursement? Since it's all staying in-house and we wouldn't be a reimbursement from federal account? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think that's actually gonna be a really helpful um, distinction for us so that we understand how these taxpayers' dollars are being used. I think that's going to be really helpful for us to make um, good decisions on council, uh, understanding it in that way. I've, I've really hated using it as a as a reimbursement from like, um, I don't need to say what goes on in my head for numbers. Well, the the expenses would still be in the you know police department, parks department, yeah. et cetera, but there would be an offering transfer rather than a reimbursement. Rather than the, uh, revenue line item. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a really healthy way to view it now. I mean, that's how I've been viewing it in my head, but that's not how it's been on paper. So I'll be excited when things in my head are the same as paper. <laughs> Thanks. I should just ask these questions off the mic. Nobody helps. Please. What Our month would this resolution come about then? December, November? Next month. We could do it in the next month. Yeah. Or okay. probably August. Okay. First meeting of August. We want to get it done before we start budgets and yeah. before we have to do our uh, third quarter report. Yeah. 
All right, well, I don't think anyone else on council has any questions. I'm sure Ed, Mel, and Tyler will be reaching out if they have concerns, comments, or things they would like to clarify. Um, I think that that will call the se study session for the day if everyone's good. Okay. Yeah? I would also just uh, learn or myself. I was going to say, make sure you don't just put my name. Day will be Friday. Good luck with the move and everything that's going on. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Victoria, very much.